Jeanette Lee is a world champion pool player, mother of six, businesswoman, and philanthropist. Diagnosed with scoliosis at 12, she has undergone more than 10 neck and back surgeries. Being the best, even when it hurts, Lee suffers from scoliosis and often plays in excruciating pain. She's had more than 10 neck and back surgeries and still rules the table with a long cue and a whole lot of courage. Most people don't know that Jeanette lives in constant pain, yet she refuses to give in. She was told that her back was crooked and her doctor was going to straighten it. Two days later, she went into surgery and woke up in a living hell. Implanted in her back were two 18-inch Harrington rods. They discovered my spine was crooked when I was 12. I had surgery at 13. And they implanted two metal rods in my spine. They fused it all together. So if you notice, I cannot, I can't bend at all. My entire spine is fused. With at 12, Jeanette was diagnosed with scoliosis and underwent surgery to correct it. Overnight, she grew three inches and was in excruciating pain. I turn at my knees or at my hips, yes. you know what I mean, or my ankles. But if you were to hold my knees and hold my ankles, I can't move at all. So, and even turning my back or my neck or when I'm laying down, I'm down. I mean, I have to grab something to turn over because I can't. She felt as if she was being burned alive from the inside out. Through tears, she looked to her mom for comfort. Under the influence of heavy pain medications, moans were the only sounds she could muster. No one told me the surgery was going to hurt, and she was not prepared. Scoliosis is a curvature of the spine, so um, like most people who might have crooked teeth, my, I needed reconstruction. My spine was so bad that I had two curves that were both over 55 degrees crooked. So a brace wouldn't be good enough. I was 12, they were so bad that by the time I was 18, I would have been a pretzel. So. Mm went in, put in some metal rods, straightened out my back, and, and that was just the beginning. That's yeah, sure. After the surgery, she was left with a long, bloody Frankenstein scar down the center of her back. I used to have short hair. And the reason why I have long hair, a lot of people don't know this, is to cover my scars on my back. Wow, from here, mm -hmm. and it all goes the way down. To here, and that's when I started growing my hair. In the hospital, she was suited in an enormous heavy cast, and with severe pain, she was forced to sit up. Several times a day, she was lifted up and made to walk. For a while, she could only make it from the bed to the door. Eventually, she was fitted for a plastic brace that went from the base of her neck to her pelvic bone. It was rigid and contained Velcro straps that were fastened by metal rings. She hated it. She felt like a monster. Her confidence was shattered, and she felt as if there wasn't anyone she could talk to. I think... Uh, the biggest misconception is that it is mathematical or it is simply a matter of playing chess. Strategy. It didn't help that she was one of the few Korean children born into a predominantly black neighborhood in Brooklyn, New York. In addition to having to wear an ugly brace, she was called horrible names such as Ching Chong, Chali Wong, and Chinky on her walks to school. She didn't fit in anywhere. In her teenage years, she struggled to find acceptance. She looked to boys and pot for attention. She became a teenage delinquent. She was hanging out late. She drank. She smoked. She was disrespectful to her parents. She was spiraling out of control in search of something to give her life meaning. Until she found an escape in playing pool. At 18, she visited one of New York City's trendiest pool halls, she saw an older gentleman gracefully playing pool. It was as if he made the cue ball dance. He took control on the table, and everything about him was confident and calm. After watching his graceful style, she was hooked. Oh, uh, I was 18 years old, and um, I saw a guy playing pool, and he was amazing. And it took me three years to turn pro, and a year and a half after that, I was ranked number one in the world. After a difficult childhood of battling scoliosis, Jeanette says she believes playing pool healed her. It became an escape. She would practice for up to 30 hours at a time. Despite intense back pain, she felt as if playing pool healed her. Or 
注意。It allowed her to not care who was watching or what people thought about her. And when her back would fail her with endless bouts of pain, she figured out ways to get healthier so she could stay at the table longer. She wanted to be the best. The more she played, the more she loved it. Really recorded, but it was very often 25, 30 hours. And I would just play till exhaustion and I ended up going to the hospital a lot. I was completely obsessed with it. And I'm still obsessed with it, but I'm smarter about it because you can only get good quality if, you're, if you have energy, and right, I was always right. tired. While others sat in front of the TV watching sports or reality shows or went to movies or parties, she felt like she was gaining on them. If she wanted to be the best, she had to sacrifice more. She was prepared to do that. She started eating healthier and strengthening her body. Even after hours of practicing, when she was forced to rest in bed, she mentally prepared by visualizing herself playing perfect pool. And I go through the whole system. After I take the shot, you see where my tip is? I can actually see that it went through the center of where the cue ball began and that I followed through properly. Still emotionally scarred from her painful childhood, she had a lot of work to do on her confidence. So she faked it and emulated the qualities and fundamentals she saw in the great players around her. She pushed herself until she believed without a doubt that she would be the best. She was willing to do whatever it took to get there. Pool became her oxygen. She could no longer go back to her life without it because in Pool she finally found her passion and purpose. She started growing her hair long to cover the scar on her back. She earned the name the Black Widow because she lured her opponents to the table and then ate them alive. Up, my head stays like this and then I look up. She focused on every perfect swing. Her bridge was perfect. Her stance was aligned, balanced, and had clearance. She had a slow backswing and a smooth follow-through. Pool is just as much a head game as it is a physical game. And in pool, there's a slow backswing and a follow-through. And if your alignment and your hand-eye coordination is not sound, your knowledge will just not get you anywhere. She turned pro at 21 and became number one in the world 18 months after that. She had prize money, sponsors, and fame. But with her success came lots of criticism. She was accused of not paying her dues and only getting certain opportunities because she was pretty. Of course, pretty doesn't make the balls go in, and she paid her dues. She just figured it out in less time. After earning the title of number one in the world, she began to consider ways she could use her platform to make a difference. According to her manager at the time, it was good for publicity. The only thing she could think of was scoliosis. She began to meet people with bodies shaped like hers or worse. What was considered at first a great PR move became a life-changing experience. In addition to being a champion pool player, Jeanette is a philanthropist and motivational speaker. Being brave is not the absence of fear, but the courage to face it, she says. During one of her early talks on her private battle with scoliosis, she met a young woman who helped her realize that her battle with the disease was much bigger than her. The young woman shared that she too was diagnosed with scoliosis and was going to school without her brace. Like Jeanette, she hated wearing it. She started to feel like there was no hope. Then she said that after hearing me, she felt like a weight had been lifted and she could genuinely smile. The young woman then burst into tears in her arms and Jeanette cried too. That's when it really hit her. She realized that while people may notice the challenges you're going through, what is most important to them is how you respond. Simply put, she kept getting out of bed, even when she truly believed she couldn't. To date, she has had more than 10 neck and back surgeries. She's developed multiple conditions, including deteriorated discs, degenerative disc disease, carpal tunnel syndrome, and severe sciatic pain. She has bursitis in both shoulders and both hips. A few years ago, Jeanette was diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis. There's not a minute that goes by that she's not in pain. Her symptoms are managed with an extensive treatment plan. Each day, she takes a large number of anti-inflammatory medications and muscle relaxers. She also takes chemotherapy pills and undergoes infusion therapy. Yet in spite of it all, she has to keep going. Today, she was strong. Not because she feels strong, 
but because she keeps going even when she thinks she can't. She's learned that being brave is not the absence of fear, but the courage to face it. It's pushing through discomfort, weakness, fear, sadness, and doubt. On her last remark, Jeanette added, It's in these moments when you find out who you really are and who you were meant to be. We hope you enjoy the video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video.